going to a yes, city, going to a city, city not made by city man. Now are waiting, Jesus said it was so, and to that city called heaven, where I am ready to go, I'm going to a yes, city, I'm going to a city, not made by city man. Not made by
it's time to open our service with prayer this evening. Go ahead and ask Brother Eddie to come up and lead us. Good to be back in God's house this evening. We have several prayer requests to get through. Pray for, uh, continue praying for Brother Sister Ball, the healing in their body, and pray for their family. Uh, let's pray for Brother Patrick for uh, the healing of the cancer in his body. Let's continue to pray for Sister Garner's brother James Green for uh, the healing in his body. Um, let's pray for Brother Albright's. Uh, sister-in-law she has a rare disease and the doctors only gave her five years to live let's pray for brother Oliver's daughter uh, Callie and his granddaughter Chloe for their salvation and uh, sister Susan turned in a request for uh, Brandy for traveling mercy she's coming from uh, Vietnam and her sister's husband's son has been deployed to Israel Let's pray for them. Uh, let's pray for Brother James. Uh, he's going for scans tomorrow. He get to pray that he gets good results from that. And uh, let's pray for Brother Scott's grandmother, Cora. She needs prayer. Let's continue to pray for Brother Sam and his son. They need healing in their body. Let's pray for uh, Tommy Simpson, Charles Chisholm, and Peggy Massey. They all need healing. Let's continue to pray for Sister Darlene, her husband Lawson, uh, that God will heal his cancer and above all, save his soul. And uh, let's also pray for her children's salvation and, and uh, let's uh, pray for tyranny too. Uh, let's pray for Sister Sandra for complete healing in her body. Uh, Brother Benny had requested prayer for uh, Daisy Butt. She had cancer. And also, uh, let's pray for the family of uh, Brother Benny's cousin uh, Bobby Burroughs she had uh, passed away uh, let's pray for the youth uh, from our church you know they, they really need God and, and, and uh, I just pray that they get get back to him uh, you know Haley and Harper and Aaron and Jalen they you know I've not been here that long but they, they really do mean a lot to me you know I have a, a burden for them Continue to pray for Brother Floyd and sister, uh, brother and sister Shortridge, Brother Mike Woolard for healings in their body. Uh, pray for my children's salvation, uh, Cody, Hannah, and uh, Cody's wife, Jamie. Uh, a lady I work with had asked me to request a prayer for her daughter-in-law. She's uh, 22 years old, and she only weighs 82 pounds. The doctors can't find out what's wrong with her, and she just keeps losing weight. Her name is uh, Madeline Halsey. Just remember her in prayer. And my cousin's wife, uh, her name's Tennille McCoy, and uh, she's dealing with some cancer issues, so we need to pray for her. And also, let's pray for Israel. Uh, does anybody else have a prayer request? pray for the O'Hara family they, uh, uh, someone that uh, Sister Andrew had went to school with and he just found out that he just passed away anybody else let's remember Sister Sarah and her family okay. alright well, let's stand and go to the Lord I'm sorry Sister Angela go ahead Pray for Sister Angela and this disease she has. The Lord can heal her from it. All right, let's let's stand and pray. Precious Heavenly Father, God, we just come to you tonight, God. We just ask you, Lord, to have your way in this service tonight, Lord. We just ask you, God, to stay sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost tonight, God. Lord, just touch our faith tonight. Our Lord, heaven, he brings the word tonight, Lord. God, I ask you to touch brother and sister Paul tonight.
God. It's good to be back in God's house again this evening. It's good to have Emily back with us. She's She's been claimed. Once you come twice, we claim you. This is your third time. It's good to have you with us here again this evening. And it's good to be back where we belong at. Psalm 84 and 3 says, Yea, the sparrow hath found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. What he's saying here is the same way that that bird belongs in that nest is the same way that we belong in these altars. So let's be where we belong at this evening. Uh, we're going to worship in spirit and truth again here tonight as the choir comes.
Lord, it's just a matter of time before you run into the devil, but make sure he runs into Jesus first. If you're holding that nail-scarred hand, let him lead you. Right. This time we're going to save our offer for ushers to come. Praise the Lord. Brother Matthew, yes, Lord, bless time and giving. and giving thank God for that work, wonder working power in the blood of Jesus Amen. this time I'm going to ask Sister Shelton Sister Harris, Sister Brady come minister in song Try. 
come against there's nothing that he can't change or he can get us through it now worry and fear are completely pointless if you walk with the lord cast your cares upon him he cares for you just take everything every burden you have to him in prayer and he'll take it from you this time i'm going to hand so so pastor brother shelton amen give god a hand of praise tonight let me know that worry is a waste of time why should i worry it's a waste of time God always works everything out every single time, doesn't he? I'm glad to be back in the house of God tonight. I thoroughly enjoyed the service this morning. If anybody was at that service on Friday night and didn't, you, you just agree with me. We just brought that from there over here this morning. We had a time in Zion around here. And uh, on, on Friday night, I think I got to preach about 10 minutes. Maybe is that right? 10, 15 minutes maybe wasn't long. And uh, we just had church. Amen. And this morning we didn't get to preach at all. The Holy Ghost preached. Amen. I appreciate these in these orders seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And God's going to fill them with the Holy Ghost. It's a promise. It's His Word. Amen. And uh, we're just so thankful for what God's doing. We go, through, we go through lean seasons at times. But here's the thing. You just keep going through those times. If you go through those lean seasons, you're going to find that place where the honey drops. Amen? You're going to find that place where God just opens up the heavens and pours you out blessings. There's not room for you to be able to withstand. But you have to remain faithful to God. The old devil lies to us. He tries his best to discourage us and to hinder us. I've been through places before, and I don't know. You know, I mean, I live right. I know how I live. I, you know how, you don't, you're not with me around the clock, but I know how I live. I live right. There's been times I couldn't feel God. I couldn't find God. And I said, Lord, I, if there's something in me, you show me whatever it is. There wasn't nothing there. Just through times of testing. Couldn't feel him. Couldn't find him. 
Oh, but it wouldn't be long. Kept seeking him, kept crying out to him, kept calling on him. Wouldn't be long. Heaven come down and kiss the earth where I stood, or where I was there praying, talking to God. Amen. So he's always there, my friend. So why should I worry? Can you say amen? amen? Appreciate all of you being in God's house tonight. We love you and appreciate you. Uh, again, I appreciate that wonderful outpouring this morning. That was a, that was as Brother Shortridge would say, that was a time in Zion. Amen. I believe everybody in this church got, got double dipped and then some. And I appreciate the touch of God. If you have your Bibles tonight, Luke chapter 16. I was going to preach this this morning. The Lord spoke to me on Wednesday to preach this today. And uh, I want to obey the Lord. Appreciate you coming. Good to have Emily back with us tonight. Emily, thank you for being back with us this evening. Good to have Brother Roddy with us tonight. Love and appreciate you, Brother Roddy. Thank you for being here. All of you, thank you for coming to church. Amen. There's no place on this earth like the church. I love church, don't you? Luke chapter 16 tonight. I want to preach, and I want you to, I told the Lord, I don't want to, I want to, listen, I love to shout. You know I do. But I want this message to get down deep in our hearts tonight. I want us to be challenged. I want us to be not just stirred, but something happened inside of us. Something that flips inside of us that we recognize where we are and the times that we're living in. Now we sing about this, we preach about this, we talk about this, that Jesus could come any time now. Everybody still believe that? Amen. Anybody in this building not believe that? If you don't believe that, we want you to come down right now we want to pray for you. Jesus can come any time now. Jesus can come before this service is over tonight. And if you don't believe that, you're not going to be ready when he comes. He said to watch, to be ready, to make sure that we're ready when he comes again. But in the meantime, in the meantime, hell is filling up. Hell is, is, is overpopulated there. So I want, I want to preach about that tonight, the Lord being our help. Luke 16, familiar passage of Scripture. We'll begin reading in verse 19 tonight. Would you say amen when you find it? The Bible said there was a certain rich man <clears throat> which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. It came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died. And was buried. These are some of the most troubling words in the word of God. In verse 23 here. When the Bible said, and in hell he lift up his eyes. Does that stir us? Does the thought of eternity in hell move us as a, a church? This, this rich man who was a, forget the rich part, he was a lost man. He was a lost man that died without Christ, died without God. And the Bible said, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. And seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, listen to his heart's cry. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. He didn't ask for a water bottle. He didn't ask for a garden hose or a cup of water. He said, let him just put his finger in a cup of water or a little bit of water. Anybody ever done that, had a, had a little bit of water drip off the end of your finger? That's all he wanted, something to cool his tongue just for a momentary, just for a moment's relief from the suffering that he was in. But Abraham responded, and Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. He had good things, but he didn't have the right things. He had good things on this earth, according to the, to the eyes of men, but he didn't have the right thing. And the right thing was God. In thy lifetime thou receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. In other words, what he's saying, 
us over here in my bosom that are, that are righteous, died righteous. If we could come over and bring you some relief, we would, but we can't. And likewise, if you and that torment could come over here to this place of paradise, you would, but you can't. You could have here. You could have fixed it here, made it right here, but in hell you can't. 27 says, then he said, I pray thee. First he cried for water, now he's praying. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Let them hear the word of God. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, if they won't be touched by the word, if they won't respond to the word, he said, Neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Even if they see a miracle, it's not going to save them. If they see the miraculous, it's not going to save them. If the word of God don't get them, they will not be gotten. Father, thank you tonight. Oh, we stand here with a heavy heart, a burden heart tonight. Need your touch now for the next little while. God, help me only to say what you'd have me to say, Lord. I pray let this word get beyond our head tonight, Lord. I believe I'm among Christians. I pray that everybody in this house is ready for heaven. I don't know hearts, God. We ask you tonight that you would touch us, that you would convict. Touch those watching online tonight, God, or uh, may watch at a later time, Lord. Let this message penetrate the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls. I pray you'd help me now, God. Touch me. I need the anointing, Lord, that makes preaching effective, God. I may behind the cross tonight, Lord, and I just ask that we will, when this message is concluded, We'll all find a way to these altars and we'll tarry in these altars tonight. Lord, give us a burden now, God. Father, I thank you again for each one that's come this way. Pray you would touch them and help them and bless them now. And we want to give you all the praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. Shake somebody's hand on the way down tonight. Tell them you're glad to be in the house of God. How many know that souls are dying and going to hell? <clears throat> Anybody still believe there's a real place called hell? It's a reality. It's not some kind of fairy tale, not some kind of fable. It's not some, some kind of gimmick that a preacher uses in a pulpit to strike fear in the hearts of people. But hell's a real place. Uh, this week when I was studying for revival, uh, this message, God brought this message to me on Wednesday and told me I was going to be preaching it here today. I was planning to preach it this morning and I'm uh, going to preach it here tonight. I, I went and looked up online the statistics for deaths worldwide. This is what I found. found something very troubling. Uh, the, the statistics worldwide said that every second nearly two people die. Every second two people die. 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 Every minute 106 people die. Every hour. Almost 6,400 people breathe their last breath and go into eternity. Every day, almost 154,000 people die worldwide every day. Annually, every year, some 56 million people on planet Earth go into eternity. They die. And we know according to the Bible that there are more people when they breathe their last breath that are dying and going to hell than those that die and go to heaven. You say, Brother Shelton, how, how can you say something like that? I didn't say that. Jesus did. Jesus said, broad is that road that leads to destruction, that path that leads to a place in hell. He said that, place is, is, that road is broad, and many there are going to be that go in on that road. He said, but straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. Hell has enlarged itself. You know why? To make room for the population of people that are leaving this earth going into eternity without God. So having said that, I want to preach to you tonight on this thought as 
God has spoken to our heart the greatest concern of the church. The greatest concern of the church. Hear the story in Luke chapter 16. Now, I've read, I've, I've preached from this scriptures many times down through the years. I, I don't know how many times, but numerous times have we preached from these scriptures. And I'm sure if you've heard other preachers uh, uh, preach any time at all, you've heard messages uh, from Luke chapter 16 about the rich man and Lazarus. The Bible shows us that the rich man had everything in life. Lazarus was nothing more than just a poor beggar. They lived in two different worlds, lived on two different sides of the track, two different sides of the community. But death uh, is an equalizer for all men. I mean, know that death has no respect of persons. Death comes from the rich, comes for the rich and the poor alike. Death comes from the young and the old. I've told you before in this church, uh, if you ever get time, go out to the graveyard, walk around, look at the markers. Uh, you're going to be surprised. You're not going to find just old people there who live to be 90 and 100 years old. You'll find infants and babies. You'll find teenagers and young adults and middle-aged people alike. Matter of fact, in the obituaries this week, uh, uh, there was a, a little baby in there. I don't know how old, maybe seven months, I believe. I read it, but I can't remember. About seven months old that died. Death uh, is no respect to persons. Death comes for the educated and the illiterate. Death comes for black, white, yellow, brown. Death comes for the king and the pauper. The one thing that makes us equal is death. Sister Shelton and I were on our trip with the Albrights here last weekend, I believe it was, and we were driving up to a 40 on that uh, Saturday afternoon, and we like to pull in a place called Stucky's. My mom remembers that place and get some ice cream there. Well, we pulled in there on uh, exit 75 or 40 there, and when we walked up, there was a, a homeless man sitting there on a, looked like maybe a picnic bench, and we walked by him, and he spoke to us. He was a little bit skinny, just skin and bones. Probably in his 30s, he looked ragged. He looked like he had been out in the weather. Uh, uh, didn't have any shoes on his feet. His clothes were, were nasty and tattered. Uh, and he spoke to us when we went by. And I spoke to him, and we got some ice cream and, and came back out, sat in the truck there, and eating our ice cream. But that man had no shoes uh, on his feet at all. He'd been walking around barefoot. Here I am, and maybe some of you as well. I've got several shoes in my closet. I've got a closet full of shoes. Here's a man who don't have any shoes at all on his feet. Uh, amen. But death makes me and that homeless man equal. Death is not going to pass me by because of what I have. And death's not going to pass that homeless man by because of what he does not have. The Bible said in Hebrews 9 and 27, uh, And as it is appointed unto me and wants to die, but after this the judgment. You listen to me. Nobody's going to escape the hand of death. Don't care how good your health is, how good you feel, uh, how good life's going for you. Uh, amen. Death is coming for all of us if the Lord tarries uh, long enough. Can you say amen? Does not matter our position in life. Does it matter our status in life? I can tell you what I don't like, what I can't hardly stand to be around is people who are uppity and think they're better and feel like they're better than anybody else. You want to get under my skin, let me get around somebody like that that looks down their nose uh, because people don't have what they have. But let me tell you something. Uh, does it matter what you have in this life, how, how high you have set yourself up and what you think of yourself? Uh, I'm telling you, death's going to come for every single one of us. Uh, we're all going to face death one day. Uh, nobody can escape death. You cannot buy your way out of it uh, with all of your money. Uh, so we we must make sure that we are prepared uh, when death comes for us. I said we have to all make sure that we are ready uh, and we are prepared uh, when we breathe our final breath uh, that we are prepared to meet the Lord our God. Somebody give him a hand of praise tonight. I want you to notice here, and the Bible tells us, 
And when that rich man died, this is what the Bible said, in hell, he lift up his eyes being in torment. Here's a man in life who had everything. Here's a man who had no worries. A man who had no concerns. He had no cares. He lacked for nothing. He was able to buy everything that his money could buy in this life. But the Bible shows us that he was a foolish man uh, because he had not made preparations for death uh, concerning his soul. Uh, and now he has died uh, and lift up his eyes in hell for eternity. I want you to notice here this rich man in hell. The Bible shows us that he had two concerns. His first concern was for himself. His first concern was that somehow uh, he might be relieved of his suffering there. The Bible said in verse 24, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, uh, for I am tormented in this flame. This was a man in this life who, who never had to cry for anything. Everything that he wanted was right there at his beck and call. But now in hell he's crying out for a drop of water. He's not begging for a nice meal. He's not begging for new clothes. He's not begging for his money. Uh, he's begging for Lazarus to dip his finger in water uh, that one little drop of water may be placed upon the tip of his tongue uh, to ease the suffering and the torment uh, of that place. Uh, and that tells us, my friend, uh, that one drop of water in hell uh, is more value, of greater value uh, than anything you will ever find in this world. One drop of water in hell uh, is more valuable than all the riches of this world. One drop of water in hell uh, is more valuable uh, than all the momentary pleasures, uh, the sinful pleasures uh, of this life today. Uh, the Bible tells us Jesus said in Matthew 16 uh, and 26, uh, For what is a man profited uh, if he shall gain the whole world? Do you realize there are people uh, that that's exactly what they're trying to do? Uh, they're trying to gain and amass all the wealth uh, and all the riches, the land, the property, the houses, uh, the buildings. They want more and more. But Jesus said, what would it profit you, sir? Uh, and what would it profit you, ma'am, uh, if you gained all the world, uh, if you owned all the silver and gold, uh, if you owned all the, the, the earth, uh, if you owned all the the houses and buildings uh, if it was all yours uh, and you lose your own soul uh, he said what would a man give uh, in exchange for his soul uh, I'm telling you tonight if anybody dies uh, and goes to hell uh, if our lost loved ones die uh, and go to hell uh, they're not going to be begging for money uh, they're not going to be begging for new clothes uh, they're not going to be begging for a nice meal uh, they're not going to be begging for beer and wine they're not going to be begging for pornography and pills they're not going to be begging for a party but they're going to be begging for one drop of water to ease their suffering and the torment of that awful place listen to me tonight there is nothing or nobody on this earth worth losing your eternal soul over you won't beg for it in hell. I said you won't beg for that in hell. That momentary pleasure here that, that's got you wrapped up. Uh, you won't beg for it there. Uh, amen. Just one drop of water is worth more than anything you'll ever find on this earth. Can you say amen? The Bible said that he cried and he begged at Abraham. He said, would you please send Lazarus? Would you please let him just put his finger in water? Let me stick my parched tongue out and let him touch that little bit of water to my tongue that I might have just a moment's relief. But Abraham responds to him and Abraham tells him that there's no way that we can send you relief. There's no way we can come to where you are and that he can never be released. That tells us that once a man dies and goes to hell, there are no second chances. 
I'm glad that we serve a God of second chances right here and right now. If he was not a God of second chances, I wouldn't be in this sanctuary tonight. If he was not a God of second chances, many of you wouldn't be here tonight. I'm telling you in hell, there are no second chances. There is no parole. There is no reprieve. There is no relief. There is no appeal. If we die and go to hell, we're going to be there forever and forever and forever in that awful place. There is no second chances there. In this life, God has been so merciful to us. God has been so gracious to us. If he hadn't been merciful, if he hadn't been gracious, if he hadn't given us second chances, I don't care how spiritual you think you are, God's given every one of us second chances and third chances and four chances. What I mean by that is this. Uh, hey Amen. There's been some times you've been marred on that wheel uh, and God didn't throw you away, but in his mercy, uh, he put you back on that wheel and kept on uh, doing that perfect work uh, in your life. Uh, there's been times we've all failed God. Uh, hey Amen. God could have uh, shut the lights off of our life right there. Uh, let us drop off into hell. Uh, but I'm glad God is rich in mercy uh, and God is rich in love, uh, not willing that any should should perish, but that all should come to a place of repentance in him. Raise your hands and love this wonderful God tonight. Brother Dean, give me a little bit more on the monitor, please. Thank you, brother. The Bible shows us that this man did not love God on this earth, and he did not love God in hell. I didn't read where he repented in hell. I didn't read where he was trying to make right with God. He didn't love God here. He didn't live like he loved God. And in hell, he did not love God. He did not repent on this earth, although God gave him an opportunity. God gives every individual an opportunity to make right before they leave this life. He did not repent on the earth, and then when he died, he could not repent in hell. He did not repent here when he could have, and when he died and went to hell, he could not repent there. As a man dies, that's how that man will remain uh, for all eternity. Uh, what I'm telling you is this. Uh, if we have sin in our heart, uh, we need to repent of it. Uh, we need to get it under the blood. Uh, because if we don't repent of our sins uh, and we die in that condition, uh, we'll go to hell. Uh, and in hell, we'll not be able to repent there. Repent. of your sins so that you can be saved from this awful place. It's more than just saying, Lord, Lord. It's more than just going to church. It's more than just toting a Bible, going to a Sunday school class, putting money in an offering plate. Our hearts must be clean and pure before God if we're going to go to heaven when we die. Can you say amen? I've shared with you the story of my uncle before. I had an uncle who was 59 years of age. At that time, he was talking about retirement. I remember some of our family telling me that they were laughing because some of my aunts and uncle were at that age of retirement. And he was 59, and he was counting down, had less than three years. He was going to retire at 62. He had worked at Klausner for many, many years. I didn't that right, Klausner? I worked for years and years at Klausner. And, I, you know, hard-working man, good man, I, as a young man, I, I don't remember, I was too young, but my mom and daddy can tell you about it. I, as a young man at my grandpa's church, he got saved in the service, I got sanctified, baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. They tell me, is that right? I used to walk up and down the aisle there I, holding his Bible up in the air, praising God. So happy in the Lord what God had done I, for his life. I, but he didn't stay in church. He didn't remain in Christ. And over time, I don't know how long it was, I, 
just know that somewhere down the road he got out of church, uh, backslid on the Lord. Uh, for the next many, many, many years, uh, he, he lived a life of sin. Uh, didn't serve God, didn't go to church, uh, didn't, didn't love God here. Uh, I remember when I got saved and got in the ministry, I remember going to try to get him to come to church and he'd visit once in a while in that old building over there. Uh, I, I remember God would be convicted in that service. Uh, I'd look at him, uh, you know, and, and just nothing, no conviction on him. Uh, matter of fact, I've seen him stand there, uh, you know, just kind of with a half smile on his face, kind of looking around while God uh, trying to save him from hell. Uh, well, you know, he, he, he did that once in a while, didn't come very often. Uh, I'd go to his house, try to get him to come to church, and didn't want to really hear anything about that. Uh, well, he had lived in California for some time, and while he was there involved in a motorcycle wreck, I hit a bus, slid up underneath the bus, and I saw the picture of the motorcycle, and I, I knew it was God's mercy that spared him. I could have been killed right there. I could have died right there, but God I was merciful to him. I, when he moved back here, was at a, a party, I believe it was, and, you know, I, whatever happened, a man and another boy jumped on him and beat him up. I, he's bleeding internally. I, got back home, wouldn't go to the hospital. One of our other uncles went to his house. They said, somebody said, come over here and tell him, get him to go to the hospital. He won't go. Uh, my uncle went to the, to the house and said, you got to go to the hospital. He agreed. Uh, and the doctor said, if you had not come in, uh, you wouldn't have lasted another day. You're bleeding to death inside. Uh, had to go and do emergency surgery on him. Uh, second time, God's being merciful. Uh, God's giving him an opportunity. Uh, I remember going to his house after it happened. Uh, uh, you know, walk in there and he's got a beer in his hand and he's he's laughing and living it up. I wanted to show me his scars and I talked to him about his soul, talked to him about getting right with God. I, I can see him sitting right there in that chair right now I, holding that beer laughing at me I, like I was telling him some kind of joke. I, I said you need to get back in church. I, you, you was in church and you served the Lord. I, well that's a long time ago I, you know drinking that beer I, got to where he didn't want to hear nothing about it anymore. Didn't want me to come and visit with him. I didn't want to hear anything about church. Didn't want to hear anything about God. One night at a party, 59 years of age, I saw the picture, the last picture they had made of him. Thinking about his retirement. That's in three years, going to be retiring, got his life planned out. I thought about that rich man in Luke chapter 12. Uh, and the Bible said, uh, he, he's got so much, he don't have room to put all of it. Uh, he said, I'm going to tear my barn down. going to build new barns. I'm uh, going to fill those barns up. Uh, then I'm going to say to my soul, uh, it's time for you to live it up, to eat, drink, and be merry. Uh, everything's all right. Going to take some rest. Uh, but then the God of glory spoke to his heart that night. Uh, and God said, thou fool, uh, tonight your soul uh, is is required of you. I tell you, friend, there's going to come a day for every lost soul, every backslider, when God's going to say, Thou fool, today is the day your soul is going to be required of you. At that party that night, on that motorcycle, coming home, they took one last picture of him. He's got a big old smile on his face, got his hand raised, waving goodbye to them. On that motorcycle driving home that night, they tell me he missed his turn. He missed the road he was supposed to turn on. He goes on down the road, going to find a place to turn around and come back and get on that right road, head into where, whatever his destination, believe it was home. What he didn't know, unbeknownst to him, but God knew. You see, God knows. God's got a calendar. It's got every one of our names on it. Every one of our days when we were born, amen, and when we're going to die, we're going to leave this world. He didn't know this, but God did that today. On that day, his soul was going to be required of him. He missed that turn, went on down the road to turn around and come back to get back on that road. 
what he didn't know was on that road he was supposed to turn on. Uh, there's a man and his wife getting in their vehicle. Uh, that They're going to back out of their driveway. They're getting ready to leave. And while they start to back out, uh, their daughter comes out and wants to go with them. She didn't want to. She was going to stay, but she decided she wanted to go. So they stopped the car. This is taking time. He's turning around now. Uh, that They kept getting that little girl in the car. He's back, found that road, turned down that road, now going home. Uh, and all the while, Wow, that car uh, that girl's in uh, they begin to back out of their driveway uh, and he's driving full speed down that road it's dusk uh, hard to see uh, and at the precise moment uh, they backed out he was there uh, didn't have time to stop uh, didn't have time to put the brakes on uh, didn't have time to say anything uh, instantly he was killed uh, they said his body laying there dead uh, in the road uh, didn't have time to do anything with God and instantly that man dropped off into a devil's hell. You listen to me. All these years later, he's still in that awful place crying out for relief and crying out to be released. But he's there for eternity. I said he's there for eternity because he waited too late on God. nicest guy you ever meet do anything in the world for you but he wasted his day of grace and his time run out and he dropped off into hell God gave him more than one chance to get right God spared him more than one time trying to get his heart right with him <clears throat> you know people went to him I wasn't the only one went to him. I wasn't the only one prayed for him. I know there's a lot of people praying for that man, uh, but he waited too late, uh, and he dropped off into hell, uh, and now he's in that awful place right there, uh, and no matter how much he begs and pleads, he cannot get out. There's others uh, in that place. No matter how much they beg or plead, uh, they can never escape that horrible place. The rich man died, and he's concerned about himself. He's begging for a drop of water there. But then I want you to notice this second concern of he has overpowered the first concern. In verses 27 and 28, the Bible said, Then he said, this is the rich man, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father. This is the first time you ever read of this man praying in the word of God. You never read where he prayed while he was here in this life. You, you never read where he prayed before he died. Uh, even when he's in hell, uh, the first time he is first concerned for himself, uh, didn't say he prayed, said he cried. But now we find him praying uh, in that awful place. Uh, he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, uh, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Uh, for I have five brethren, uh, that he may testify unto them, uh, lest they also come uh, into this awful place of torment. Uh, he cried out for a drop of water. Uh, for himself. A hey man can't find any relief, nothing to be done. You can't help him now, it's too late. But now he begins to pray for his brothers that are here, those that are still alive on this earth, those that have not gone into eternity yet. This is what he's saying. I can't help myself. I can't get out of this place. There's no more hope for me. I wasted my day of grace. Hey man, I'm here. But I've got five brothers uh, that are still alive on that earth. Uh, i got five brothers uh, that there's still hope for them. Uh, would you please send Lazarus back uh, and let him work uh, and let him try to win them uh, to keep them from coming to this awful place called hell. This man knew he had lost his chance. But his five brothers still had a chance to be saved and go to heaven. This man no doubt loved his brothers on this earth. And he still had a love for those brothers in hell. He's concerned about their eternal souls. Some folks have made the foolish statement. They said, if I go to hell, I'm going to have plenty of company there. A fool said, when I get to hell, we're going to have a big party over yonder. 
when I get to hell, going to be plenty of people around me over there. Well, you got that right. There's going to be plenty of people there if you go there. But you listen to me. The truth is people in hell don't want any more company. People in heaven do. People in heaven, there's a crowd, great cloud of witnesses that's pulling for us uh, to make it. Uh, there's a crowd over yonder in heaven that want us to come to where they are. I'm telling you, those in hell, they don't want anybody else to come there. They don't want any more company in that place, uh, especially not the members of their own family. Uh, this is what we learn from his experience. Uh, he's praying to Abraham, please uh, let Lazarus go back. Uh, I got five brothers. Uh, I don't want them to come to this place. Uh, I don't want them to experience uh, what I'm having to experience. Uh, I'm telling you, those in hell, uh, they don't want their children to die and go to that place. Uh, those in hell, uh, they don't want their grandchildren uh, to die and lift up their eyes in hell. Uh, those in hell, uh, they don't want that lost husband or spouse, uh, that lost wife. Uh, they don't want that lost mom or dad. Uh, they don't want that lost grandma or grandpa. Uh, they don't want that lost grandson or grand daughter uh, to die and go to that awful place. Uh, so they're crying out, uh, would somebody go win my family? Uh, would somebody go tell them about Jesus uh, lest they die and come to this place I'm in? Put your hands and praise the Lord tonight. I want you to praise him because you're not on your way to hell. Adalamohu shataru huta my uncle had three brothers. The first one that died, died. He was, he was intoxicated. And he was out on the road walking and somebody, somebody hit him and killed him. I assure you that if he never had time to make right with God, I don't know, it wasn't there a long time ago. But if he didn't have time to make right with God and he went to hell, I promise you he was pleading for his three brothers left here. For my uncle and his other two brethren, please somebody go tell my brothers not to come to this place. Please somebody go try to win my brothers not to come to this place. All those boys died tragic deaths. My uncle's brother had been in prison for a number of years, got out of prison, nice-looking man, friendly man, went to a party one night, hadn't been out of prison too off along, just a few short years, went to a party, got the drink and got mouthy. Him and another man got into an argument, and the man shot him and killed him right there in his yard. The man he laid there and died in that man's yard. The other brother was killed in a car accident. Don't know all the details of it, just know he died tragically. My uncle was killed in a motorcycle accident. Every one of those boys died a tragic death. But I tell you, the first one that went to hell, if the first one died, if he didn't have time to make right with God, uh, amen, he prayed, somebody please go tell my brothers uh, not to come to this place. If we could hear the screams in hell tonight. I assure you, if we could hear the screams in hell, uh, wouldn't nobody die and go to that place? I said, wouldn't nobody die lost uh, and go to that place? We don't, we're not afforded the privilege to know that and, uh, and to hear that. I just got to believe what God's Word says. Uh, I'm telling you, if we could hear the screams in hell, uh, there would be people begging God. Uh, there would be people calling for God. Uh, they would be begging for relief. Uh, they would be begging to be released. Uh, but I believe we'd also hear the inhabitants of hell uh, crying out to somebody please go witness to my lost mama please go try to witness to my lost daddy please go try to help my brother my sister that's lost somebody please go tell them whatever you do when you die don't die and come here don't die lost don't die and go to hell hmm. They realize there's no more chances for them. They realize they've wasted their day of grace. They realize there's, there's no parole there. You can't get out. Listen to me. I'd rather be too straight than be a little bit crooked. 
That's why we challenge you and we preach like we do. Make sure you live right. Don't play around on God. Don't play games with God. Don't be halfway. Don't be half committed. Listen to me. Don't be satisfied with an ankle deep or a knee deep or a loin deep experience with God. Get all the way in. I said get all the way in. Give God your everything. Your eternal soul, my eternal soul is hanging in the balances. I'm going to leave this world. It could be tonight. I don't know when I'm going to leave here. But what I do know is I'm going to leave here. I'm not going to live forever on this earth. And I've got to make sure when that time Time comes uh, that my heart's right. Uh, I said my heart's right with God, uh, and I'm ready to meet the Lord. Uh, lest I lift up my eyes in hell. I don't want to die and go to hell, do you? I said I don't want to die and go to hell. I want to make sure my heart's right, that my heart's pure. The Bible said the rich man cried out to Abraham. I want you to do something to make sure my brothers get saved. I want you to please do something to make sure they don't come. At least tell them. At least warn them not to come to this place. You listen to me. Hell must be a terrible place if those in hell don't want to see anybody else come there. That's what he's saying. I don't want them to come here. My grandpa told, told our family before he died, I'm going to be waiting by the gate, waiting for you to come in. Those in heaven, they want us to come there. They want us to make it there. But those in hell, they don't want anybody else to come there. That They realize that they're, 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 they're damned. Their soul is damned now forever and forever. Uh, amen. But they don't want those on this earth to come uh, to that awful place. This is what he's saying. Uh, please go let them know. Please go warn them. Uh, I can't do it. I, I'm here. I, I can't get out of this place. Uh, but would you please send somebody uh, to tell my brothers uh, about hell. Tell them about the reality uh, of this place. Tell them uh, you don't have to go there when you die. You don't have to end up in this place. I, I'm glad, my friend, uh, that Jesus died on that old rugged cross. I, I'm glad for the blood uh, of the Lamb that washes us uh, and cleanses us from all of our sin uh, that we can go to heaven when we leave this world. Uh, woo! I'm glad Jesus has made a way. I don't have to go to hell. Those in hell, they don't want anybody else to come to that place. The question's raised here. Why is it? Why is it that he had such an interest now in his brother's salvation? You never read anything about his concern when he was here in this life. You never read where he was trying to win them to the Lord when he was here. The Bible never shows us that he ever tried to warn them about hell while he was alive. He was not concerned about their souls before he died and went to hell. So the question's raised. Why does he have such an interest now that he's there? Why is he so concerned now? Well, the answer simply to this is simple to this. He's finally consent convinced there is a real judgment to face. He didn't believe in hell when he lived here. He didn't believe the judgment of God. He didn't believe such a place existed because if he really believed such a place existed, he wouldn't have went to such a place. That's why he never warned his brothers while he was alive. That's why he never told them, you better get saved. That's why he never invited them to church. That's why he never went by their house and say, hey, we're going to church on Sunday. Come on, go with us. I, no, sir, he never done any of those things I, because he didn't believe there was such a place. I, but now he knows from a personal experience I, that there is a burning hell I, for lost mankind to spend eternity in. I, he didn't believe when he lived his life I, here on this earth. But you listen to me. I, in hell, he is a believer. I, all those that die and go to hell, I, they'll go there because 
knows they are unbelievers. But I assure you, you'll not find one unbeliever in hell now. They all believe now. But yet it's too late for their souls. Now he believes. Now he knows. That knowledge made him want to see his brother saved above everything else. I believe that there, there are multitudes here on this earth, countless multitudes, just like this rich man who do not fully believe they're going to face the judgment of God. And I got something a little more pointed for you. I believe there's people in churches, maybe some in this church tonight, maybe some watching online tonight, that they don't fully believe they nod their head when you preach about it. They say amen when you preach about it. They, 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 they read about it in the Bible, but they don't fully believe that such a place exists. You know how I know that? Because if Christians, really, real Christian people really believed that there was a hell, if people really believed there was a hell, they'd be faithful to God. They'd be faithful to church. They'd be faithful to his altar. They'd be faithful to that book. They'd be faithful to live a holy life. If people really believed there was a hell, and I, hey man, they would literally abstain from the very appearance of evil. If they really believed there was a hell, and I, hey man, they, they'd do everything they could in this life uh, to make sure that they serve God with all that they have. Uh, they wouldn't play around with sin out there. Uh, they, they wouldn't play games with that old adversary. They wouldn't play great games uh, with that old world out there. Uh, if, if people really believed uh, that there was a hell, uh, I can tell you this church couldn't hold everybody tonight uh, and the church down the road uh, and the church up the road. Uh, if people in Ashboro really believed there was the hell uh, that men are going to go to if they die lost uh, or backslidden or lukewarm. Uh, amen. Every church would be full uh, on a Sunday night. Somebody ought to say amen to me. Uh, I'm telling you if you really believe uh, there's such a place as hell, uh, I want to make sure uh, I don't ever go to that awful place. Lift up your hands and praise him tonight. Shatamama. If I really believe there's a hell, I'd be careful what I watched on television. If I really believe there's a hell, I'd be careful what I looked at on the Internet. If I really believe there's a hell, I'd be sure I didn't cheat on my taxes. If I really believe there's a hell, I wouldn't be caught dead telling a lie to anybody. If I really believe there's a hell, I'd be real careful about the kind of music I listen to. If I really believe there's a hell, I'd be careful about the people I hang around with. If I really believe there's a hell, I'd be doing everything within my power to get as close to God as I could get. I said I'd be doing everything in my power to get as close to God and to walk right before the Lord. Not just on a Sunday at church, but on Monday I'm going to walk it right. going to live it right. going to serve Him the right way. And then I'd do everything in my power to try to keep somebody else uh, from going to that same place uh, that I don't want to die and go to. Hallelujah. I'm burdened over souls. I'm burdened over people that drift. I'm burdened over people that are lukewarm. I'm burdened over people that are backslidden. I'm burdened over people that are lost. I'm burdened over every soul that ain't ready for heaven. I'm burdened over every soul that is not ready for heaven. Because listen to me, friend. Not one of us are promised another day on this earth. You can appear spiritual in here. You can do all that. You can learn how to do it and be slick about it. But if we're not living right out there in that world, hell is going to be our destination. I said hell is going to be our destination. I don't want to die and go to hell. And I want to work and try. You know, those in hell are concerned about those that are here not coming there. Then the church ought to be concerned as well. This ought to be the great concern of the church today. Not who got to sing on Sunday morning. Not who got to 
do this or do that. Uh, not, not what color the carpet's going to be. Come on now and say amen. Uh, amen. We swat at gnats and swallow camels uh, while souls are dying uh, and going to hell. Uh, the screams of hell. Uh, somebody go tell my lost mama. Uh, somebody go tell my lost brother. Uh, somebody go tell my lost daddy. Uh, whatever you do, don't die and go to hell. That has to be the concern of the church today. I've got to make sure I'm right. And then I've got to work to try to help somebody else get right. He never told his brothers about hell, about church, about heaven, about righteousness. He never said anything to them about it while he was here. It was not until he died. Now he wants to warn his brothers. Now he wants to win his brothers. Now his concern is for their lost souls. It took him dying and going to hell before he got concerned about the lost and wanting to win souls. I'm going to close here in just a minute. Seems like those in hell today are more concerned over the lost than those that are here on this earth. We're concerned about a lot of things, aren't we? Listen to our speech. Listen to how we talk. Listen to what we say. Listen to what our concerns are. We're concerned over a lot of things in this life. We're concerned about our money, our jobs, our houses, our hobbies, our health, our happiness. God didn't save you so you could be happy. I just want the Lord to give me happiness. No, you don't need it. You just need peace. You just need peace, the peace of God. We're concerned over our problems, but where's that concern for the lost souls on the way to hell at a breakneck speed? Where's that concern? Many say they believe there's a hell, but do nothing to keep men from it. It's hard to get Christians to pray for the lost. Oh, I didn't come to beat you up. Call a prayer night. We're going to come pray for our lost family members. See how many people come. It's hard to get Christians concerned about the lost. It's hard to get Christians to visit the lost. Call a visitation. We'll go out and try to win souls. See how many people show up with such a heart, such a burden. We're concerned about a lot of things, but the, those in hell are concerned about the lost here. We have a short time. Just a short time in this life. And I promise you those things that we spend our times that are going to burn up and going to pass away are just worthless. Worthless in eternity. Things that won't mean nothing in eternity. But what will matter is how many people I want to the Lord how many people I pointed to Jesus. How I lived my life before others. You can invite people and, 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 and become a stunning block to people and cause people to miss heaven by the way you live. That's why if you're going, if you're going to name the name of Jesus, live for Jesus. Don't just call yourself a Christian. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I can't stand somebody to say, I want to thank my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, for all his goodness in my life. The next thing you know, they're saying bad words out of their mouth. I can't stand it. I can't stand to hear somebody. We, we heard somebody, I, I can't remember what it was now, but I said, I can't stand to hear somebody call themselves a Christian. And we want to thank God for helping us win the game today. We want to thank the Lord for helping us win our, our team to win. We want to thank God for helping me win this fight. God don't care nothing about football games. God don't care anything about fighting. God cares about souls where they spend eternity. That's what God's heartbeat is. It is for the lost to win souls so that they don't die and go to hell. I just want to thank my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, because without Him, there's no way I could have scored that touchdown to win the Super Bowl. nonsense, ridiculous. I want to thank the Lord for giving me this platform. 
this boxing platform that I can knock this my opponent out and, and use this to talk about my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. The next next words out of their mouths are foul, foul language. Will the real Christians, I believe I preached a message one time, this, will the real Christians please stand up? Will the real Christians please stand up and be a light in the darkness of this world? Stand please all over this house. We're like Martha. We're cumbered about. We're concerned about a lot of things. We're concerned about things that don't mean nothing, that don't mean anything. But what matters most is that lost soul dying for eternity in hell. One commentator said they'll be dying but never able to die, dying over and over but never being able to die. The very thing that, that, that you tried to hold on to, the very thing you neglected, the thing that cost you your soul if you die and go to hell, I promise you it won't mean nothing to you there. I just, I wanted to serve the Lord, but I just love this boy so much. That boy won't mean nothing to you if you die and go to hell. I really want to serve God, but I, I, I just can't let go of this. I just, I just need it. I need it. You don't need it. It's your flesh that needs it and wants it. But you won't care about it in hell. I really want to serve the Lord, preacher, but I just, I just, my time's valuable. I got too much. Listen, in hell, all you're going to have is time. All you're going to have is time to think about the places where you could have got right, the places and the things in your life that you say, I wish, I wish I'd give everything, I'd give everything if I had lived for God and made heaven my home. Every second, two people die. Every minute, 106 people die. Every hour, 6,400 people die. Every day, 154,000 people die. Every year, 56,000 people die. One day, you and I will be part of that statistic. One day, my name will be in the obituaries. One day, your name will be in the obituaries. And how we live is how we're going to die. If I live for God, I'm going to stand before Him and I'm going to give an account for what I did with the talents He gave me. And I'm going to give an account for how I tried to win souls while I was here. He's not going to give me rewards for how much money I had in my bank account, what I was able to amass in this life. He's not going to reward me for the number of friends that I made, what, what my position was on my job, how, ele how high I could climb in the ranks. What God's going to judge me by is what I did with what he gave me in this life and how I used it for him and for his glory and his kingdom and how I worked to win souls. Jesus said in John 4 and 35, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for the, they are white already to harvest. Those in hell, every head bowed and every eye closed, please. Those in hell are concerned over their lost families. Are we concerned over ours? What are we doing to try to reach them? Do you pray for them? Do you fast meals for them? Do you plead the blood of Jesus over them? Do you do it daily? Do you live that Christian example before them? Are you working for the kingdom of God? Hell's concerned for the lost. Are we really concerned for them? I want to give you an opportunity. I don't know your hearts. I, I pray that we're all saved, and I pray if 
if we're to leave this world now that we're all right, all ready for heaven. But you know deep down in your heart, you, you know what you are. You know what you are. They tell me that what a man or woman is behind closed doors when they're all alone, nobody else is around, that's what they really are. When nobody else can see what they're doing, when nobody else can see what's taking place in their life, yet Jesus knows us. I just want to give you an opportunity before we come pray for anything else tonight. If you're in this house and you're not ready for heaven, you'll say, Brother Sheldon, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I want to make sure my life matches up with Christ. I want to make sure I'm serving Him the right way. I want to make sure everything's under the blood the way it should be. I'm inviting you to come right now. I'm inviting you to come right now. These altars have been open the whole service from the very opening prayer. These altars have been available to you. If you're not ready for heaven, you've got things in your life that you know, you know, you know you can't go to heaven doing. You ain't got to have a Bible for some of it. You know you can't go to heaven doing it. And you want to get free from it tonight. You want the Lord to do a definite work in your life tonight. Because you want to go to heaven. You don't want to go to hell. Would you come right now? If your desire has dwindled, if you've lost your desire, oh God. Let me tell you how you lose your desire. When you neglect prayer, when you neglect the Word of God, when you neglect church, your desire is going to go away. It's going to vanish. You have to keep putting fuel on that fire every day. You have to keep putting wood on that fire daily. If you've lost your desire for His house, for His Word, for His order, if you've lost your desire for Him, if you've lost your, left your first love, if you don't love Him like you did, these altars are open for you to come and get out here and fall in love with him again. Fall in love with his house, his word, his altar, his holiness. Would you come tonight? Would you come, please? I'm going to wait just a few minutes here because I know that some need to be here. I, I know that you, you're here because God, God doesn't just waste our time. He doesn't just talk to air. He's talking to us. I know that he is. And I know there's some in this house under the sound of my voice that need to be in these altars tonight. You need to go ahead and cut ties with some things. You need to, some of you just need to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Just a, just a, a fresh experience of your love. Not, not so you can shout, not so you can get goosebumps, but, but that your heart's swollen with love for Jesus. For Jesus, for Jesus. Would you come tonight? Would you come? Would you come? Somebody said, Allah Maha, Shata Maha, Kanda La Maha. I have called for you, saith the Lord, and I'm calling for you to come. I'm calling because I have a desire to touch you. I have a desire to have fellowship with you, saith the Lord. I'm calling because I have a heart of love towards you. Would you respond to me? Would you respond to my word? I'm waiting for you, saith the Lord. Respond to me, and I will touch you, and I will move upon you. I will refresh that love. I will touch you in such a way that you will know that you are mine and I am yours, saith the Lord. Put your hands and praise Him and love Him.
Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? We're going to wait. I'm not going to rush this tonight. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come right now, please? God's talking to you. God's dealing with you. They're coming. I appreciate the, the if God's talking to you, come. Don't sit there and try to argue. Don't sit there and try to reason it out. Don't, don't, just, just come. Just come. Just come. They're coming. I appreciate these coming tonight. I don't want to just, I don't want to just get a feel good or a shout or I want something to happen in our hearts that my love for Jesus is like it's never been before. They're coming all over this house. I, I appreciate them coming tonight. They're responding. They're responding to what God said to their heart. They're responding to his word. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Would you come, please? Would you come, please? They're coming tonight. Would you come? I don't want to go to hell. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want your families to go to hell. I don't want anybody to go to hell. Anybody else tonight, would you come? I want some of you that's able to come. I want to pray with these, these precious people. These are souls in these altars tonight. These are souls. Somebody said, I just don't like them. How could you not love them? How could you not care for them? They have a soul. You don't have to like their ways, but you have to love their soul. Oh, God. Shata maha kata. Oro shanala maha. Jesus. Oh, God. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Don't worry about what the old image says to your mind that you you got to give this up. You can't do that. You just, listen, I just want to fall in love with Jesus tonight. Because when you love him, nothing else matters. Hallelujah. I said, when you fall in love with Jesus, nothing else matters. You just want to please him. You just want to live your life to please him. You just want to be faithful to him. God, work in these hearts tonight, Lord. Work in these hearts. 